Welcome to Being Immortal. This is a, a, a day that we have to remember because the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, died on this day that I'm recording this. And I just found out about this within the last few minutes. And there's a new king of England. Now, the head of state of England is also the head of state of Australia and a half a dozen other countries, Canada included. She was the head of state. And now it passes to King Charles. We call him King Charles now. He's not a prince anymore. He's the king, automatically. The last breath of the queen signaled that he was automatically the king. We don't know if he's going to use the name Charles or whether he's going to use the word George, or the name George, or what. But Charles is a neat name. It in in English, it it really means free man. King Charles, King of Free Man, and it's also shortened to, to in other countries to K A R L, Carl, and C A R L, Carl, and the meaning is free man. If he goes by George, then it would mean earth worker. Hmm. You know, Georger, Georg, George. <laughs> I, I, I meet people named George and I say, oh, you're, you know what your name means, right? Uh, it means earth worker. And they go, huh? Farmer? What? Anyway, today's a a sad and joyous day because the day of one's death is more precious to Yahuwah than any other time of your life. So she died in 2008, about midday today in England. It's uh, later here in the United States. It's uh, about 3.52 right now in the afternoon. So we're just now hearing it on the news news services. So we uh, long live the king, <laughs> and uh, Charles is seventy three. Oh, that, that's got to hurt. I'm seventy two, going on seventy three myself. Uh, anyway, we were going to read to you today. I, I wanted to discuss Matthew or Matthew chapter twenty four. Are we in the last days? Are there any floods going on? Well, a third of Pakistan is underwater just itself. And there's a lot of deaths. There's been 1,350-something deaths, and hundreds of children are, are just languishing, and pregnant women. Pregnant women. That reminds me of something that Yahushua mentioned. Let's open up the, uh, let's open up the Besora and have a look at that and see what that looks like. The, the B-Y-N-V, that's the um, translation that I did, uh, well, I started on it officially in 2013, but I've got it right over here. Let me get it. All right. Are we in the last days? Well, the last days are going to be pretty ugly. Asteroids. Clashing into the earth, the roaring and the, the crashing of the seas. What else? What else happens in the last days? A lot of bad stuff. Horrible, horrible, horrible things. Turn on this light. Yeah. Let's see. We have uh, Met Matthew. Yeah, here he is. And that would be chapter 24. Now, chapter 24 of Matityahu reflects a lot of the things that are going on in Yashayahu or Isaiah 24. Those two parallel each other a lot. It's uh, horrendous. And then Isaiah or Yashayahu 25, he actually tells you why he's going to burn the surface of the earth. Revelation tells you it's going to be the sun that's going to cook it. Okay, Matthew 24. Let's read this. This is important. 
Uh, and going out, Yahusha went away from the set-apart place, and his Talmudim, that means his students or pupils, came near to point out to him the buildings of the set-apart place. And Yahusha said to him, Do you not see all these? Truly I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another at all, which shall not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the Talmudim came to him separately, saying, Say to us, when shall this be? And what is the signal of your coming at the end of the age? And Yahushua answering said to them, Take heed that no one leads you astray. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Mashiach, and they shall lead many astray. Well, there's one on the throne uh, in Rome right now that says that he's the Mashiach. And you shall begin to hear of wars and reports of wars. See that you are not troubled, for these have to take place, but the end is not yet. For ethnicity, that's foreign people, shall rise against ethnic ethnicity, that's race against race or nation against nation, and rain against rain. And today we just saw the passing of a rain to a new king. And there shall be scarcities of food and deadly diseases and earthquakes in places, and all these are the beginning of birth pains. Then they shall deliver you up to affliction and kill you. And you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. His name's Yahusha. And they don't like Yahusha. They'd rather have a fake name. And then many shall stumble, and they shall deliver up one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise up and lead many astray. And be, uh, yeah, uh, they're praying rosaries and talking to the dead and bowing to statues and little pieces of bread. Oh boy, it, it just goes on and on. And because of the increase in lawlessness, the love of many shall become cold. His covenant is about love. They don't teach his covenant. But he who shall have endured to the end shall be delivered. And this besorah, this message, of the rain shall be proclaimed in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end shall come. So when you see the abomination that lays waste, spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, set up in the set-apart place, he who reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Yehuda flee to the mountains. Let him who is, who is on the housetop not come down to take whatever out of his house. And let him who, who is in the field not turn back to get his garments. And woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing children in those yomim, those days. And pray that your flight does not take place in winter or on the Shabbat. That's the seventh day of the week. That's the day we rest. Pray that your flight's not on the Shabbat. For then there shall be great distress. Such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And if those yomim, those days, were not shortened, no flesh would be delivered. But for the sake of the chosen ones, those yomim shall be shortened. If anyone then says to you, Look, here is the Mashiach, or there, do not believe. Then two shall be in the field. The one is taken, and the other is left. The one that's left is righteous. The one that's taken is burned. Two shall be grinding at the mill during the day. One is taken and one is left. 
Remember, the one that's left is the one that's righteous. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your master is coming. And know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Because of this, be ready too, for the son of Adam is coming at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is a trustworthy and wise servant, whom his master set over his household to give them food in season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, having come, shall find so doing. Truly, I say to you, that he shall set him over all his possessions. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant shall come on a yom, on a day, when he does not expect it, and at an hour he does not know, and shall cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 24. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next exciting video.